tuned in to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, guiding your gridiron journey, none other than your host, former NFL lineman, Ross Tucker. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a Wisdom Wednesday, presented, of course, by DraftKings. Love those dudes. Love those of you that do any little extra thing to help out our network of shows. It could be as easy as doing anything on social media. Just engage in any way. Ross Tucker Pod on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, or at Ross Tucker NFL on those three, or TikTok. And those of you that take advantage of our sponsors, whether it's Raycon, or ExpressVPN, or DoorDash, or GameTime, or Babbel, you're awesome. Just make sure, after you do, you send me the email, ross at rostucker.com. Just recorded a video yesterday for Ignacio, last week's YouTube shout-out winner. This week, we'll have another YouTube shout-out winner. Pretty easy. Just go to youtube.com slash NFL, subscribe, and reply to any video. Literally, your reply can be, I'm just here for the free cameo-style shout-out video, Ross. It's that easy. Just like it's easy to get a shout-out when you're a patron. Patreon.com slash RT Media. That's where you see the picks. That's where you see the even money betting spreadsheet. Shout out today, David York. So fired up for today's big show. Everybody's going to love it, but especially Lions fans. It's big show time. The big show. All right, so I usually only bring him on once a year, and that's during the offseason. But I couldn't help myself, dude. I mean, they're 6-2. and two, They're in first place. He's like one of the best linebackers in the NFL. And they're on prime time all the time. It's amazing. It is. This is the most excited I've been about Alex Anzalone playing football since 2012 when he won me my precious state championship 15 years after I graduated from high school. You can check him out on social media at Alex Anzalone 34. Dude, so good to see you. So good to talk with you. I appreciate you coming on the show again. I know we usually do it once a year in the off season, but you're killing it, man. I had to, I had to talk with you. I had to hit you up midway through the season. No, appreciate that, Ross. You know, I always love being on, talking to you, and chopping it up. Well, let's just start with you guys are coming off the bye. So what? Uh, how much time did you have off? What did you do? It's interesting because, you know, I, I played seven years. This is your seventh year, right? Yeah. But I wasn't. I had never had kids or anything yet. So usually like by week, first of all, we would only get like the weekend off and I would, uh, you know, I do something like super fun, but you've got like, you're married with a child and another one on the way. <laughs> like what was your by week at like? Uh, well, first I start this, the, the timing of it was good. Cause it was in the middle of the season, but the timing wasn't good in the fact that we had a Monday night game. So that really kind of shortened it up a little bit. So we had to go in on Tuesday, but Dan gave us the rest of the week off, which was nice. So, um, you know, it's honestly harder work at home than it is going to work at the facility. Um, you know, just chasing around a two year old and, uh, you know, getting the house ready, like you just mentioned for a newborn baby. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard work. It's tough sledding around here in the Anzalone house. <laughs> Dude. I mean, you're, you're a really smart guy. You're, you've been in the NFL for a while now. You're having a baby girl November 30th. You play for the Lions. They play on Thanksgiving every year. What, what What's the timing here, man? You know, it was just one of those things where, you know, we thought it would be, you know, we got to deal with this adversity of the timing of it <laughs> to really get through to make it worthwhile, right? Um, no, we just kind of just let things happen, obviously. And, um, you know, it's, you never want to take, like, pregnancy for granted, honestly. That's really what it was. We just didn't, you know, people – try to time it up perfectly and, um, you know, try to wait it out and then they can't get pregnant for a while. So that's really kind of what, what it was. It's a, it's a really good point. It's an unbelievable blessing. And it's funny because I don't know what I thought before I had kids, but like knowing what I know now, um, well, I'll, I guess I'll ask you first, like what, what if, what if the baby's coming uh, you know, on a Sunday at one and you guys are about to play, like, um, yeah. is there a chance that you have to kind of make a decision or what? Um, you know, the way things are going, 
I don't necessarily think we'll be in that situation. Um, you know, we have the Thanksgiving game, the is the game right before the due date. So um if it's a Thanksgiving baby, then I have a decision. But um, you know, we'll see we'll see what happens. You know, this stuff you, you never know how it goes, but um yeah, I could I could face a decision. Do you know what you would do? I I'm out of there. I don't <laughs> sorry, Lions fans. <laughs> You know what, man? It's funny that you say that. Cause I I uh I look at it now, no chance I would miss that. Yeah, no. Yeah, and no. really the the main reason is because and you hate to say this, but like what if something didn't go well? Right? Like no what doubt. if there was some type of issue and decisions needed to be made? Like I would never forgive myself the rest of my life if I wasn't there while that stuff was going on. Now, certainly I'm sure my wife and I would have done everything possible that we could to not have it be during a game. And I mean, if the baby was born at 11, I'd be at the game by one, you know what I mean? But like, if it's happening during the game, there's just, you know, sometimes there's complications, you know? Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Life is fragile. Like you said, so you never take it for granted. And, um, you know, there are things that are bigger than football, more important than football. But, um, you know, like you said, hopefully we're not in that situation. Dude, this is great now because now we're going to we'll, – when we post this uh, interview, we'll – like the headline will be, Anzalone likely to miss Lions. Like we're going to get so many clicks now because of this. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It'll get me brownie points at home with my wife. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Hey, so, dude. Oh, so let's take a step back. What did you do oh, for your bio? You just hang around house. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, took the little one to his little mommy's day out program. Um, you know, just chase him around, uh, you know, just hang out. I actually got a good workout in on Friday at the facility. So, you know, just getting your body back recovered. I got a massage and, um, you know, because some guys get out of town and, you know, to me, it's like two travel days going there and then going back that really, you know, take a toll. So, just want to get ready for this back stretch of the season. You know, I think the older I would have been in the league, that's what I would have done too. You know, just be able to decompress. Like you have the whole off season to do other stuff. You know, if you want to do other stuff. Um, do you feel like this is the best you've ever played? Yeah, I feel like every year I'm like I'm. I told my wife like years ago, like my biggest. I don't really care about like the accolades and you know all the you know, pro, but whatever, like well, that stuff will come. But like my biggest regret in my football career would not reach my potential. And each year, especially here in Detroit, I'm getting closer and closer to what I feel like is what I could potentially be as a player and a lineback- linebacker. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, I, I definitely think so. You know, that was all I ever would talk about was regrets. You probably heard me give a speech once or twice at, at camps or at school, but like, I just wanted to be able to look back and be like, you know what? I became the best player I could possibly be. And honestly, Alex, I never became as good as I wanted to be for whatever reason. Right. But it wasn't for a lack of trying, you know, like I I tried to be the best I could. I still look back on it. Wish my, you know, my technique was a little bit better or this or that, but like, man, I put everything into it. No doubt. And that's, that's kind of the mindset too, is just like, you know, you're going to do everything. You put your best foot forward and, you know, like, you know, you know better than me, but like injuries happen and that sets you back. Um, you know, just not the, my biggest regret would be like not capitalizing on my opportunities to, you know, be leave a legacy really. But dude, you're almost, are you 30 or 29? 29. So you're not supposed to be playing the best football of your career. I don't think 29 in your seventh year, I mean, you've gone from sort of a backup and then a nickel guy and then injuries and then, okay, you're starting in Detroit. So now, you know, I I don't know if you saw this, but Greg Cosell, who's the NFL Films guru, he comes on my show every Thursday. He thinks you're one of the top five linebackers in the NFL. Like, that is amazing. What do you attribute that to? I don't know. I feel like, um, I mean, if you ask like my coaches and stuff like that, they, they wouldn't be surprised. And um, like, even if you're going to like the scouting personnel and the GMs and all that, they wouldn't be surprised. But um, you know, I feel like it just, 
when your opportunity meets like where you're at. Well, I don't know. It just, it's just kind of just things fall into place and you get in the right situation. You get the right people around you. You have, you know, teammates doing what they're supposed to be doing and playing good football and you're winning games and, um, you know, you get more attention and you get more primetime games. People start to notice it's just a, a cumulative effect of everything put together that, you know, kind of makes it seem like, wow, this came out of nowhere, but really there's been flashes and there there's been good film on display in the past. No doubt. No doubt. And I thought you played really well last year. And obviously that's why Detroit gave you that contract extension. I didn't know if you felt like, you know, just the experience of starting so many games in a row the last couple of years. And it's like, you're just yeah. like into a rhythm or maybe it's yeah. just a confidence thing. You know, maybe it's just like, because you look super confident and like, you know, what's going on a lot before the play. I love when they bring you as a blitzer. It's just really, really fun to watch. It feels like, it feels like you feel like you're the best player out there, you know? Right. Yeah. And especially playing defense, you have to have that confidence. And like, as soon as you lose it or it's as soon as it starts to flutter a little bit, that's when you don't play as good as you could be. And, um, you know, yeah, I feel like definitely my confidence just every week and, you know, my goal is to be one of the best players on the field and make an impact on the game. That's really my thought process. So your last game on the Monday night against the Raiders, uh, I was sitting in my um, basement in the theater drinking some Labatt Blue Lights like I typically do when I'm watching football, living life to the power of we, which, by the way, you should always enjoy responsibly beer, Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. Two things – well, three things were awesome about that. Number one, you were playing great. But then also um, the atmosphere. Like, I'm just so happy for you and for the Lions fans that you're hosting a Monday night game and the people are going bonkers. And I, I want that for those people. Like, I really – I like I I root for that for like Bills fans and Browns fans and certain fan Lions fans. I know several Lions fans that they, they've just been down for so long. I I just I love feeling like they're like erupting on these stages. It's awesome. Yeah, it's the best. Like you think about the the fan bases that you could play in front of, and uh Detroit's definitely one that's you know starving for a winner, like you just said, and they they've been wanting to cheer for something for so long and uh, we're able to give it to him this year so far. And, you know, it's kind of, it's cool because as a player, like the reason, one of the reasons why I really wanted to come back to is that, you know, you, you, this is like an opportunity for all of us to leave our legacy, you know, just because like they haven't been good for so long and, you know, you make the playoffs, you win the division, you win a playoff game or two, that's somewhere that's, you you know, you, you can hang your hat on that. Not saying that's the goal is to win the Super Bowl. But that's something to hang your hat on to leave a legacy here and just you know build the culture like we've been doing. It's um it's awesome. That that's that's something that and and you 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 touched on it, but you can't do that. Like what you're doing does not happen very often. Right. right? Like we know in the NFC, like the Niners have been good the last few years, the Eagles have been good the last few years, the Cowboys have been good in the AFC, it's the Bengals, the Bills, Chiefs. Teams don't really in the NFL very often go from here and as long as the lions have been down here to where you guys are right now i mean you're what you are part of right now you're you're in the middle of something really special and really rare actually if you look at it in the nfl yeah for sure it's definitely it's definitely rare and it's definitely you know and it what, what it hasn't been easy i would say um it's a lot harder than you'd think and i um, mean i mean you know as a former player how hard it is to kind of get out of that hole just like from a mindset perspective. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, we're, it's like history in the making and, you know, it's, it's really cool to be a part of and, you know, it, you know, we all cherish it as, as players really. Yeah. It's like a culture thing, right? It's like, yeah. I, I, I hated playing against the Steelers because playing against the Steelers is like in high school, people playing against why missing where it's like, they just like, they know they're going to win, you know? And it's just like, it, it, you know, it, it shouldn't be that way in the NFL. And the Lions used to be like one of the bad teams, right? We would play against, and you're turning them into um, a good team. I, I'm sure you saw it, 
But those like four guys in the stands that had Angeloni costumes, that was unbelievable. <laughs> Have you seen those? Uh, yeah, I saw I saw it on the game after. I was getting interviewed by the NFL Network um, on the field after the game, and they were talking about it. I was like, I have no clue what you're talking about. Then I got on my phone and saw it on Instagram and all that. That that was funny. Um, you know, no clue who they are. I have no clue who they are. But, uh, you know, I appreciate it. I love it. And, you know, they got some TV time, too. <laughs> you know what? You, somehow you got to connect with those guys. That was that was just such a – because the next day was Halloween. I took my daughters out. That was a perfect Halloween costume to wear to that game. Yeah, it's a, it's an easy go. I mean, all you got to do is get a blonde wig, a little headband. You're good to go. <laughs> Did you do uh, Halloween the next night with your son? Yeah, yeah, we did. We uh, were construction workers. We have some construction on the street to go over, and uh, our son Coop. He that's all he wanted to be as a construction guy. So that's what we were. Loved it. Yeah, loved it. It was snowing. It was snowing here for Halloween. The lip, yeah, it was. We we started. It didn't snow right until we got out, and they're like, "Is it snowing right now?" And it was. It snowed like you know a little bit, but not. It was. It was cold. <laughs> Wow. Um, so the next game, who do you guys play? Rams? Uh, Chargers. Oh, that's right. Chargers. All right. Talk to me about um, the Chargers and, and kind of what you're thinking going into that game. Yeah, so they play tonight. So we'll see. Well, I'll get a better – I'll probably watch that live and get a better feel for their team, you know, and their offense and how they operate, which is kind of cool to, Cool because when you watch on film on your iPad or whatnot, um, you don't necessarily get a feel for the game, and watching it live is always nice. Um, but no, they're, they're a good team. They have really good personnel. They have, you know, Herbert and Eckler and, uh, Keenan, Keenan and, uh, what was it? Keenan Allen, all of them are balling. So, yeah, no, um, you're right too, because number one, like when I watch tape for the games I'm broadcasting, if you're watching the coaching tape, I can't see if they run tempo or not. Right. You know, like stuff like that. Whereas the TV copy, you can see that. And I don't even know, I don't know if you guys do this, but I know there's for a fact that there's teams that, the TV copy is actually in the intercut that the players watch. Yeah, yeah, we have it. We have it as an option, um, you know. And when we get into like the cadence report and what the quarterback, you know, how he what what is his double count like and all that, um, that's really where, where you get into it. And also, like you just said, tempo. You know, like third and short situations. You can see on the coaching copy or like what we get as players is you know the refs kind of just you know bustling out of there. But then when you watch the TV copy, you get the whole picture of, you know, how they went hurry up and all that. Alex, uh, so proud of you, man. Uh, check him out on social media at Alex Anzalone 34. Absolutely killing it. Um, you don't need to tell me what it is, but do you have the name picked out for your daughter yet? So I do. I, in my mind, I do. <laughs> Lindsay, she's not complete. She wants to, you know, she wants to be triple sure of everything. So We'll probably over the next few weeks go over some names, and um, I think it's going to be the name I, I want. So, <laughs> That's, oh, I know what I wanted to ask you. I got to ask you real quick. Um, your parents, yeah, everything's going great. I mean, that was that was that was crazy, man. I mean, the timing that the, the one time they happened to go to Israel is when all that stuff was going on. Yeah, so you know they went with their, their church group, and it was like a nice vacation setup. Like they put up good money to you know go to some nice hotels and you know, do it right, you know, and, um, you know, it just happened to be in the middle of a war popped off when halfway through their trip. And, you know, it was crazy. Like I, the story I tell is, um, you know, their original flight planned out of there was the flight they got out and, you know, on the commercial flight there, I guess it's, I forget El Al is the Israeli. Air yeah. Army, yeah. And they have a missile defense system on the bottom of the commercial plane with a, it's like a laser that deters, missiles and rockets coming at the plane so once i heard that i was just on flightaware.com just tracking the flight on the way out there like hopefully it gets to a certain elevation that i can go to sleep so yeah it was it was nuts um as you could probably imagine that is crazy well anyway i'm glad they're back i'm glad they're safe i'm glad you're killing it thank you so much for coming on the show man as always really appreciate it appreciate you ross so fun to interview somebody that you've known for so long and that you're so comfortable with and familiar with. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that as much as I did. Um, and, you know, with me, Alex just keeps it real about the baby and everything. That was awesome. I'm keeping it real with you guys. If you're going to ever have any desire to learn a second language, 
it's all about Babel. Even if you're traveling somewhere, Babel. I mean, their quick 10-minute lessons designed by language experts can help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. You guys know how I am with the length of these podcasts. I like bite size, right? It's rooted in real-life situations delivered with conversation-based teaching. That's the key. There's a reason why they have over 10 million subscriptions sold. Babbel is real language learning for real conversations. Here's a special limited time deal for our listeners to get you started right now. Get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for you guys, at babbel.com slash Ross. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash Ross, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash Ross. Rules and restrictions may apply. Tux takes. All right, Ross, we have a lot of quarterback news to get to, including the Titans officially naming Will Levis the starting quarterback and the Cardinals activate Kyler Murray to the 53-man roster. Well, there would have been, I saw this a little bit on social media, there would have been like a mutiny among Titans fans if they went back to Tannehill. You, you couldn't do that. I mean, with where they are this season, with where the roster is, with the way Levis played the last couple games, with it being the last year of Tannehill's contract, Vrabel did the right thing. He knew what he had to do. And that's exactly the right decision that he made going with Will Levis. And then the Cardinals, this is big news. It feels like unless there's a setback this week, man, it certainly feels like Kyler Murray's going to start. I'll say this, though, Jack. I wouldn't expect, like, miracles his first time out there, right? He's now had, what, nine or maybe by, by the game, he'll have had 12 practices in this new offense, 12. And he hasn't played in the game in almost a year. It could be a little bit ugly early, but I, I wouldn't let that discourage you, Cardinals fans. Let, let the rest of the season play out. There's a lot of ball to be played. Some roster moves involving quarterbacks. The Rams signed quarterback Carson Wentz, and they cut Brett Rippon while the Giants bring in Jacob Eason. Okay, so let's do the Rippon part of it first. Did they not, like, sign him last week? He started in the game, and then they cut him. I mean, that we, maybe we should look up when they signed him, but that cannot have happened very often in NFL history, where a guy gets signed, starts, cut at that position in a one-week span. Wow. And the Giants need another body. I mean, they need somebody. They're going to bring in Eason, who's got some ability, been around the league for a while. But they need somebody now that I think Tyrod's still on IR, and Daniel Jones is done for the year. But the big news, obviously, Jack, is Carson Wentz. He's back in the NFL, and he should be. I mean, you look at some of the guys that are starting games in the NFL, you cannot tell me that they give their team a better chance to win that game than Carson Wentz did. You can't tell me that. Has Wentz regressed since the 2017 MVP caliber year? Of course. Has Wentz become what we thought he could be? No. Is Wentz even like a good starting quarterback in the NFL? Probably not. But he's better than a lot of the guys that are out there starting games in the NFL right now. The thing that's kind of a shame about him going to the Rams is, if Stafford's okay, Wentz is just a backup. I mean, Wentz just doesn't even, he won't even get a chance to play, whereas for these other teams, he'd probably get a chance to play pretty quickly. Like the Giants, quite frankly. So with Rippon, he was signed in the offseason, and then he was promoted to the active roster in, on September 13th. And then I assume he'll go back down to the practice squad if he clears waivers. But oh, that's we'll a move... good point. You know what another good point is? When this podcast stops, that's time to order in with DoorDash. If you get pizza cravings at halftime, that's ordering time. If you're dreaming about tacos during a timeout, boom, they're on your doorstep. Wait, you want burgers, chips, dips, drinks, and wings instead? Even better. Order on DoorDash and get everything you want delivered without missing a minute of the game. A couple more moves. Commanders put Ricky Stromberg on the IR and signed Julian Good-Jones off the Eagles practice squad. Linebacker Blake Martinez is signing with the Carolina Panthers. And the Cowboys signed wide receiver Martavis Bryant now that he's been reinstated by the league. So the last two are the interesting ones to me. Martinez retired to, like, sell Pokemon cards or something. And suppose he made a bunch of money, but then he got in trouble. I don't know that whole story there. A lot of times when guys retire early, they come back. 
As for Martavis Bryant, he hasn't played in the NFL in forever, been in a bunch of different leagues, but he was always super, super talented. We'll see if he does anything for the Cowboys. Other than that, I think we're done here. Thanks for tuning in to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also check out Even Money, Fantasy Feast, and College Draft, all on the DraftKings Network on Samsung TV+, Plus, YouTube, or subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform. Shout out to MyFrontPageStory.com. I'm telling you guys, it's the best gift you can get a loved one. I'm telling you, it is. MyFrontPageStory.com. Big fan as well of BackOfficeScheduler.com, Go-Bangles.com, SteakhouseSports.com, HumanHeadNYC.com, Sportaculture, and of course, yummy, yummy, Pizza Boy Brewing.